Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? This is Brett and Jesse, hey. otherwise known as Turbo Planet. Cheers. Cheers. VC cheers. Hmm. So, um, this is I think our fourth in our Turbo Planet series, and um, this is a culmination, what we're going to show in this video, of uh, I think three to four, I think three trips we took together, <laughs> and then one that was separate that we're combining. and. Um, in the background, which you probably can't hear, we're listening to one of the greatest albums of all time, James Laid on cassette. This was a VCLT from uh, Paul on the VC, so thanks again. So we're going to get started here. This first batch that we're going to show was uh, <laughs> some Zia Records here in the Phoenix area. And uh, I'll start here. This is Tone Loke, 12-inch for Wild Thing. Wild Thing. Backed with Loked After Dark, <laughs> so, uh, Killer has original Tower Records uh, tag on that one. So yeah. Me, I got the same thing. Tone, tone, <laughs> <laughs> tone low, but this is Funky Cold Medina. Medina. And uh, two bucks, uh, well spent. Yeah, two. It was good, for titties. sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, back in 1996, my band Audra opened for this band here, Sheep on Drugs. I can't believe that's like 17 years ago at a club called the Mason Jar. And this is their, I can't, this was such a killer score. This is the 15 Minutes of Fame 12 inch. Uh, I paid 99 cents for this, and that was definitely a great find. It's backed with uh, the edit of 15 Minutes of Fame along with uh, one of the album tracks, uh, Uberman. Really great score on that one. That was a good show, too. I remember that. So I'll leak, uh, I'll, well, for a while now, both Brett and I have been looking for this record. And um, we both are holding our grails right now. My brother is in Denver right now, and I've been texting him, like, don't be a dick, go find this record for me. And he's like, I'm not going to any record stores. But anyway, long story short, <laughs> last night, I purchased U2 No Line on the Horizon. And uh, it's perfect. First off, I have to say that <laughs> there's a girl that works at the record store that Jesse <laughs> likes. And uh, my brother's sister-in-law went up while we were all in the store and um, said, my, my friend Jesse over there likes you and wants to give you her number, or his number. And she told, uh, told her that she had a uh, boyfriend. So that was kind of a bummer for Jesse, but then he finds No Line on the Horizon. <laughs> so he kind of was like all like relieved, in fact. Yeah. So the week prior to that, <laughs> I found this one, which was a great score. I've been looking for this for a long time, and that's New Order's Substance. 1987, uh, double, so cool. double LP. I mean, New Order, Ceremony and Everything Has Gone Green, which were two songs that were written uh, while Ian Curtis was still alive, so they were Joy Division songs, and they were the first two uh, two singles for uh, for New Order, Temptations, Under Blue Monday, um, True Faith, and stuff. The CD version has a bunch of other tracks on the second disc, but man, that was an epic score. That's awesome. Uh, well, starting from me for today, um, Revolver Records opened their second location, and I got Between the Buttons. For Rolling Stones, and um, I'm always on the look for some Rolling Stones, but especially this album, and it's it was in decent shape. It's a stereo print, but the price was right. Yeah, prices. That was a good show. Do it. I found this last night. I was looking through the soundtracks, and they just happened to have like a stockpile of some soundtracks I I never see. And this is Dogs in Space, a movie with Michael Hutchins, but I saw this and I was like, wow, and then I flipped it over and I was like, okay, so killer, because I've been looking for the Boys Next Door vinyl for a really long time, and it just so happens that their track Shivers is on the soundtrack for this, so that was a great score. Not only does it have that on it, it has Endless Sea, um, Iggy Pop, which The Church actually did a cover of that song. It has a couple of Iggy Pops, it has Brian Eno on it, it has Gang of Four, um, yeah. And, just really cool. So that was a good score, and I think that was like a dollar or something. So yeah, righteous. It's a good score. I'm gonna carry on with this with uh, the Rolling Stones, some girls, and again, price was right. Um, Brett's is different. It's got different people in it. Mine is actually the edited one, but price is right. So yeah, once again, good show. 
Do Vanna it. White. <laughs> okay, Tom Waits, Real Gone. This was used, I picked this up last night, and it's like seriously like near mint. Double record set, gatefold with the lyrics. Um, there's a track on here called, oh, is it Tomorrow? Dang it. Tomorrow, Day After Tomorrow. Great, great song uh, by Tom Waits. So, yeah, man, his stuff doesn't pop up used very often. Look at the spine on that, if you can see it. Just a nice, thick record. Good score. Ooh, a nice spine. This is actually, um, unfortunately, a replacement, as mine has gone missing. It's the M.I.A. Lips, M.I.A. <laughs> lips Like Sugar, um, Roller Coasters beside a dub mix and a 12 inch and a single mix, but again, mine went missing, so. It's a great song. It's a good song, it's a good replacement. I also found this right along with the Tom Waits, and that was a really nice uh, used copy of the Beatles Abbey Road. I didn't have this on vinyl, and uh, I definitely am looking forward to listening to this one so I can hear that fat bass line to come together and just the glorious acoustic guitar work of George Harrison on Here Comes the Sun. Seriously, excellent. So, Abby wrote. Today, um, we were at Revolver. I found Style Council. Obviously, I'm a big, obviously, a big Weller and Jim. They don't all know that. Band. <laughs> Style Council, a huge fan, so Internationalist, side one, and then Walls Come Tumbling Down on side two, so I was excited. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's a score for him. He's always talking about Paul Weller, Do Style it. Council, Baja Men. Baja so, yeah. Jesse keeps talking about Revolver. So Revolver, and I was we were just talking about this, <laughs> Phoenix is having a resurgence. It's going back to the 80s, 90s glory days of record stores here in Phoenix, Tempe, um, and uh, Revolver Records, independent record store in Phoenix, opened their second location in Tempe, which is really great. So we got there right before, you know, we wanted to be, I think we were fourth in line. And for 2013, the fact that there's a, it's not record store day and there's a line wrapped around the building for a, for a record store opening, is just a testament just to people uh, showing their support for mom and pop run businesses and also for the vinyl format and physical format and supporting local stores and it's just a great thing. So we were there, got in there right away and it was a madhouse <laughs> in there. It was like so crowded in those aisles and it was just glorious. Our friend James met us and it was just, it was a blast. So I found this one and uh, I never see this one and I found the Empire Strikes Back. Double wreck, man I was so excited to find this one. I just need Return of the Jedi now. It's got the gatefold with the booklet in here and um, two records set, the back cover, just uh, just killer. And I think this is an RSO record label. So I, Jesse was standing next to me and I showed it and I pulled this out and he's like, oh, if you find another one, <laughs> um, grab it from me. And I'm like, yeah, right. I never see this. <laughs> <laughs> so like right after that, bam! There's another one. So. I already played side one. Does yours not have the? Is yours different? No, mine's got the. Yours is. Wait a minute. What's yours got? We didn't look at him. Wait, yours got a book. Well, now I feel well, cheated. Wait, where am I? Oh, missing? yours is missing the book. I'm always bookless. I got the good one. Yeah, your Depeche Mode one too. <laughs> the Depeche 101. Mode. I know. Depeche Mode. Um. The Beatles. Yeah, but you're always not getting the book. I'm always, I'm um, So there was, uh, I found this, Depeche Mode, A Broken Frame, their second album, which is, uh, it's a West German pressing on mute. Um, stereo slash mono? Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Actually, and it has the, it has the, uh, uh, insert on it, and, uh, I'm gonna show you the record on this one. Yeah, it's got the, the uh, baby blue mute label there, which is cool. So that was a great score. This art, or the cover art for this is just so striking. And yeah, it was. It actually was a Depeche Mode day because I've got Depeche Mode people are people still in the string, which you know this is actually a best of album, so it's kind of a weird album for its time. I used to have the cassette for this 1988, 1989 ish. I had the cassette, but. Nothing can be better than this. So. 1988. Good score. I remember. Good I year. remember. Echo in the Bunnyman Ocean Rain, another one today from uh, Revolver's grand opening. Yeah, I, I listened to this uh, just uh, 
a little while ago, the killing mood, the second side, the orchestration on it, just really nice, really, really, really solid release there. What year was this? Oh, 83, 84? So, mm -hmm. 1984? Yeah, really nice. That's a nice score. And then I guess for me, and carry on with Depeche Mode, this is a single, just can't get enough with any second now. But I've always loved Great this. Cover. I have the 7-inch somewhere, you know, me and Brett are both huge cat fans. And um, my cat was just like that, but not white. So I guess he wasn't just like it, but he was really fuzzy and he was lazy. Hmm. Do it. Hmm. <laughs> Boys don't cry. Uh, so this was the American version of The Cure's first album. The UK was Three Imaginary Boys. So in the UK, the single a lot of times the singles wouldn't be included on the actual albums. And uh, so what what they did is for the American release of this, it has Boys Don't Cry and uh, Killing an Era, and it replaces some of the other try and jump in someone else's train. So it replaces some of the tracks that uh, were singles were in the album tracks on Three Imaginary Boys. That was a killer score. You know, I would see this all the time, and you know, before a kind of big vinyl resurgence, you know, you'd see it all the time, and I just thought, oh, I'll just grab it another day. And then I saw it today. It was like when we walked in, it was the first thing I saw, and I just went. Ching. Just grab that immediately. <clears throat> Bjork, I miss you. This is actually um, a part two, one, actually part one of a promo series from the, the Telegram album of remixes. I think I showed part two in my Bjork part two yeah, video. Talking. So, and it was like the bad remixes. This is the one with the good mixes. So. Grail, yeah. grail alert. <laughs> so right here total grail i walked in um you know while everyone was like gathering around and looking at all the new you know the at the end cap where all the like the choice records were so i went over in the p section there was a little small and i couldn't believe it because there was original pressings of graham parsons gp album and grievous angel and i was like wow you never see you just see the reissues so I looked and there was actually a section for Graham Parsons and this record, which I've never seen in person, Graham Parsons and the Fallen Angels Live 1973. Total growl for me. Um, I actually have that shirt, but mine's blue. I've probably worn it in videos before. Just a great score. I was so happy to find this one. Uh, a live release, as I said. Let me pull out the record for this one. Oh, what was this? Didn't see this. Sierra Records, <clears throat> the little little brochure catalog is in here. I didn't see that. And then it actually, oh wow. Oh, you smell that bit kind of basement smell? Um, and then it has a... <laughs> I just want to breathe it in. Yeah, and then it has a picture sleeve here for GP and it lists uh, photographs with credits. Wow, really cool. And this is on Sierra Records. Yeah, wow. Dang, excited for that one. So, yeah, killer. That's pretty sweet. Thank you, Revolver. Uh oh. Uh oh. Another grail. Me and Brett are always looking for care. Today I got the West Germany 17 seconds. And we've already actually gave it a whirl. Yeah, we just listened to it. We knocked back a couple of PBRs and gave it a whirl. It's perfect. It sounded great. As always, this is probably one of my favorite Cure records. I have the cassette and the CD and the remastered CD. And uh, I just did my video on great second albums. This would be one of mine. And uh, there it is. Yeah. So when I, like I was talking about about record stores out here, there's a great shop in Scottsdale called the Record Room. The guys that run it, super so cool. cool. Just it's like going and hanging out with your friends when you're there. You go in there and they, you know, it's just a cool vibe. But you know, it's it's just excellent. So my girlfriend picked this one out out of the dollar bin, which was really cool. It's uh, Connie Francis sings the all-time international hits. So it's got uh, Misery Lou, it's got um, Girl from Ipanema, Mac the Knife, uh, and I Love Her. Uh, just a, and what now, what now my love? Yeah, thank you. Olivia and Rose, Stardust. So just a great uh, compilation of stuff here. And we were just talking about the movie The Craft. How, um, <laughs> uh, what is her name? The Mom. The Mom. 
when she uh, inherits all that money from whatever that guy's her insurance. Her husband dies. Her husband dies. Yeah. And then uh, she's the only thing she wants to get is a jukebox that plays only Connie Francis. <laughs> so I forgot about that and Jesse mentioned it. The idea of the craft so soundtrack good. on cassette. That's so good. I love yeah. that movie. I might actually, we have to watch it sometime. Yeah, we might have to. Keeping up with all things that are pink and missing you. Pink? <laughs> Where was that thread from? What? That beer? Pink? Oh, oh, I miss you. Well, okay. anyway. I wasn't paying attention. This is the, I wasn't even listening. Um, miss You, uh, probably one of my favorite Rolling Stones songs with Far Away Eyes on the B-side. Far Away Eyes on the B-side is one of my favorite pink Rolling Stones songs. Show the back cover of that. That's so cool. Check that out. Just and killer. I think I just showed the 7-inch. Of this recently, I like think, in one of my I videos. I think you did, yeah. So yeah. from the Some Girls album, Miss You. That's a special disco version of Miss You. So it's right. like eight and a half minutes. Right long. on. I love Neil Diamond. Uh, his voice. You know, when I perform myself, I've often had people come up to me and say, "You sound like Neil Diamond." And I'm that like, woman at Coffee Talk, like. Yeah, eight you're, years ago. You're right. And you so, sang "Sweet Caroline." Oh, too, right? I did "Sweet Caroline" for her. Sing it. Yeah, "Sweet Caroline." Ba -ba mm -hmm. Anyways, so I never see his very first album <laughs> just for you, and bam, there it was on Bang Records. So that was a great, uh, great score. And look at that Radio Shack realistic <laughs> sleeve. Look at that. So I thought that was so killer. So, man, but here's what people don't realize about Neil Diamond. This was his first album from 67. And look at the track listing. The very first song in his very first album was Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon. Man, straight out of the gate with that. Red Red Wine's on here. Cherry Cherry, I'm a Believer, Shiloh, Solitary Man. On his first album, man, insane. And if you guys have never heard... Uh, the Rick Rubin produced 12 songs, which came out, I think, in 2005. Definitely get it. It's a phenomenal record. This actually goes back, um, for me, a little over a week ago. This is Casket Girls. Like, seriously. I'll pull it back a little bit. This was um, a band that I just Whoa. recently saw, and it's got nice. a, kind of a pale peach-colored vinyl. We need to give that a whirl. This is seriously a great record. Fear of the Peach. Fear of the Peach. Cool, I gotta check that out. So also at the record room, I've, I've been looking for this because so many people have recommended this album to me, even you know Derek and stuff, and I've, I've seen reissues of it, and they were always, or originals, and they were always, always really expensive. So I pulled this out at the Van, Vandergraaff Generator and um, Pawn Hearts, and when I, uh, uh, Flipped it over. I was just afraid what the price was gonna be and I saw it and it was 298 and I was like damn So, you know, it's a little it needs to be this the uh, it needs to be re-glued But still for three dollars. Otherwise, it looks good. It is a cutout, but like I said for three quid BAM This one um, this isn't a recent find this is actually something I've had for over 20 years but filing my new Echo and the Bunnymen finds, I came across this. This was a gift um, for my 16th birthday. And uh, I thought I'd lost it, like my other Echo and the Bunnymen, but I didn't. So I wanted to show it just because I was happy that it's not gone forever. And I still have it. So. Right on. Ian McCullough, Faith and Healing. So this is my last one. So I kept, like, as I was when we were at, when I was at the record room, I kept looking at the wall, and I kept just you know it's like there's so much to take in when you're at a record store, and there's so many so much stuff on the wall, and you never give proper attention. So I kept my eyes kept passing over, and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, that's the damn black album I've been looking for. That <laughs> so sure enough, I found a copy of that, and this is the double edition. I think this is a 1990 repressing of it. It is also it's a West German. So it's the double record set. I love that album cover. It's got the guys on there. So this has the album. It has that on the uh, on the second disc. It has the uh, the oh, what's the song called? I'm like blanking out. Uh, Curtain call makes up the whole side. It's like 17 minutes on on side C and then side D. Excuse me, was the whole lot all the live track. So I listened to this immediately when I got home after getting it and listened to it twice and. Uh, just really excellent, excellent. Really happy to find this one, The Damned, the Black Album. <laughs> For my last one, I actually chose Money Lemon Drops, World Without End. 
And this has um, inside out and fall down like the rain, which I have the seven inch for it as well, that I've had for a little over 20 years as well. So very cool. All right, so as you can tell, we had Good a pretty stuff. satisfying haul. Like I said, this is over the period of about a couple of weeks. And uh, man, we just really, uh, like I said earlier, just really fortunate to have a lot of good, great record shops um, all within vicinity. And now to the new Revolver in Tempe, it's just uh, you know one more to add, one more to add to the stop. So, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, yeah, thanks. We'll so see you soon.